this video we'll talk about new step sequencer in Logic Pro. The step sequencer editor didn't come with the key command in this update, so we can decide which key we want to assign to the step sequencer. Press option K to open key command editor. Now search for the step sequencer. And as you can see show hide step sequencer command is empty. I'm going to use key N which is by default assigned to the score editor. I'm not using it so it's not a problem for me. You can assign any other key and Logic Pro will inform you if it's used by any other command. Now let's select an empty cell and press N. As you can see you can easily access step sequencer with this key command. Next let's take a closer look at the step sequencer. This sequencer is inspired by classic hardware step sequencers that have rows used to generate repeating musical patterns. You can simply click empty step to create a note. If you don't want to hear note every time you click a step, you can bypass MIDI out. From now on you can select step without note being triggered. Press option O to activate MIDI out. Now let's listen to this pattern. You can choose the number of steps for the overall pattern in pattern length pop-up menu. When you increase the length, the added steps duplicate the existing pattern. You can edit the added steps to add variation or change the pattern. When the length is more than 16 bits, the entire pattern may not be visible in the step grid, depending on the zoom level. In this case, the pattern is divided into sections called pages, each showing a part of the complete pattern. An overview of each page appears above the step grid. You can click the page overviews to quickly switch between them, or use option tilde command. Now let's go back to 16 steps and look at the row header. Rotate buttons allow you to move all steps in the row one step left or right. By default steps in the pattern sounds from left to right, similar to how the playhead moves from left to right in the track area. You can change the playback mode for the overall pattern and choose a different playback mode for individual rows. You can play it backward, steps play from right to left. You can use ping pong mode, playback alternates between left to right and right to left. or in random mode. To change the step rate for the row, choose a note value for steps in the row from the step rate pop-up menu. Hold Ctrl and use plus minus to switch between different step rates. You can control different aspects of the event triggered by a step using edit modes. In velocity mode you can drag vertically in the step to set the velocity value. You can hold command key to activate steps in any mode. Now let's look at all available edit modes. You can select any mode from this pop-up menu or use a key command. Hold Ctrl Option and S to switch to step mode. V to switch to velocity edit mode. G for gate. T for tie. N for note. O for octave. L for loop start endpoints, R for note repeat, C for chance, F for start offset, A for rate, and K for skip. There are multiple ways you can access these edit modes. Press Shift Option I to open Local Inspector. Here you can edit pattern, row and step settings at the same time. Also you can view and edit multiple edit modes using sub rows. When you add a sub row it defaults to the next available edit mode for that row type. Two sub rows of one row cannot have the same edit mode. Now let's take a closer look at each edit mode. Velocity controls the loudness of the note. You can hold option key and click the note to reset the value. Gate value shortens the note. Tie on the other hand can extend note length. You can click the right edge of a step to tie it to the following step. Next let's add new sub row. In note edit mode we can transpose the pitch of the step in notes. If you go to inspector, pattern section, you can find scale quantize menu. Here you can choose the musical scale for the pattern. So now all the notes will belong to the same scale. You can hold option key and use arrows to transpose the note. Same as you would do it with MIDI. Hold shift and option key and use arrows to jump between the octaves. Let's move to the next one. 
In this mode, you can transpose the pitch of the step in octaves. Now let's add another sub row. When loop start end mode is active, a frame appears around the row. Drag the left edge of the frame to set the start of the row relative to the overall pattern. Drag the right edge of the frame to set the end of the row relative to the overall pattern. You can hold Option Command key and use plus and minus to edit loop end. Hold Ctrl Command and plus and minus to edit loop start. Note repeat controls how often the note repeats during the duration of the step. This is useful if you want to create drum rolls. Now let's move to the chance edit mode. Chance controls the probability that the step plays each time the pattern repeats. This way you can have a lot of variation within 16 steps. Hold Option key and click on nodes to reset values. Start offset mode allows you to move the start and end point of the step. This way you can achieve swing effect. The step rate determines how long it takes for the playhead to move across the step, whether or not it is active. Now let's move to the last one, it's called skip mode. When skipping is on, the step is skipped and playback moves immediately to the next step. Hold Shift, Ctrl, Command and hit Backspace to clear all the values. If you don't remember key commands, you can find these parameters in View, Functions and Edit menus. Next, let's see how we can add more rows. You can click Add Row pop-up menu and choose the row assignment for the new row. Or you can hold Option Command key and press L to activate Learn mode. Now you can use your MIDI or virtual keyboard to input notes. Now select a row and press Command Backspace to delete rows. If you press Option C, you can open Color Palette. This way you can assign individual color to each row. If you hold Command Shift and press R, you can randomize all the values. This applies to any mod that is currently activated. This is a good way to quickly generate ideas or get inspired. Step Sequencer includes a pattern browser where you can choose and save patterns and templates. Press Shift Option B to open the browser. The browser contains a variety of pre-made patterns for drums, bass, keys and other instruments. The pattern browser also features templates which includes pattern, row and step settings but with an empty step grid that you can use as a starting point for creating patterns. You can click the browser button instead of using key command. Now let's add automation row and look at what we can do with automation in step sequencer. I have inserted reverb on this channel so I can try to automate wet parameter. Now let's drag it up and activate steps where we want it to be changed. Next we can open sub row and change the values of each step. In this example first step will open reverb at 100%. This way you can automate any parameter. Now let's look at what we can do with this region. If you right click on the step sequencer cell or region, you can convert it to MIDI and continue working in MIDI editor. Press Command Z to undo last step. Now this time right click and choose bounce and join. This way you can convert cell into audio file. The step sequencer is a very powerful tool that can help you to generate ideas. You can try using it with different instruments and it is specially suited to creating drum patterns using drum machine designer patches.